pivot lab that we're going to be looking at now is the beer lampert law and we're looking at percent transmittance or absorbance versus concentration so we're going to start here and we're going to look at a couple of different solutions we're looking at copper sulfate and we're looking at cobalt chloride and we're going to see how much light passes through them now it's going to depend on the wavelength of light that we use and from this information we're going to generate a graph and from the best fit line for the graph, we're going to be able to use it to um, figure out how, what the concentration is of an unknown solution. So the first video here is just going to describe how this works. So go ahead and watch that one. Now the second video here is going to talk about what we're actually doing. So here I've got a copper sulfate solution. It's got a zero molar concentration, which isn't going to help very much because it doesn't absorb any light. So I'm going to switch to something a bit more comp concentrated so I'm doing 0.3 for absolutely no good reason and I'm going to press go now when I do this what we're going to see here is we're going to see our light going through our copper sulfate solution so if you look at going through what you see is the amount of light that is passed through this solution varies as a function of the wavelength so that's blue and then we're going to keep scrolling until we get to the color that is absorbed the most, which means that the spot is going to change its appearance the most, because we're looking at the absorbance as a function of the wavelength of light we're using. So as I keep scrolling here, you're going to see that the one that changes the most is this one at the end, and that is going to be in the red, and so we are going to use this for our information. Now the bottom scale here, um, you see the colors on the top, and on the bottom you see what's called grayscale. Grayscale is just shifting how we look at this to something our eyes can figure out a little bit better. And we're going to use that to determine um, what the concentrations are. So for example here, if we look at our 0.3 molar cobalt chloride, and we take and we place our um, solution over it. Now if we switch to cobalt chloride here, and we take a look at it, we can figure out what it's, go to 0.3 because that's what they asked us to do. I'm going to press go. go and take a look at this and if i do the cobalt chloride instead the cobalt chloride solution is red it is going to absorb a different color than the copper solution does and what we can tell from the grayscale, which is this spot down here believe it or not is how much light actually gets through that sample as a function of concentration so when we do this what we're going to do is find the color of light that has been absorbed the most and once we do that, we are going to stop our video so that the little container that this is in, which is this guy here, that's our cuvette, is directly in front of the color that is absorbed the most. And then we're going to look at a little grayscale to figure out what that concentration actually is. And so here, if we look at the cobalt chloride, as we go over the blue light, which is where it's absorbed the most, we pull our little gray scale out and what happens is this little gray scale is like a ruler with different shades of gray and we are going to shift this little ruler until we color our spot color actually seems to disappear and that is going to correspond to the percent transmittance of our sample so you're going to do that with 0.5 molar using some blue and then we're going to keep on going here and we're going to look at transmittance as a function of wavelength. So you're going to do the same thing, and you're going to find the colors that absorb the best for each of those. And then we're actually going to do some measurements. So the percent transmittance is what goes through, which is a comparison of the original intensity of the light versus the new intensity as some is absorbed. And we're going to be looking at percent transmittance, but we actually need instead to get a nice um, linear um, relationship between concentration and how concentrated our and how much light is absorbed is we need absorbance. Absorbance is the minus base 10 log of the trans of the percent transmittance and we're going to use that. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to take and you're going to find yourself a solution. So I'm going to pick copper sulfate again for no good reason. I'm going to pick if you want to do this I would start with the most concentrated. It seems to be a bit easier as you start. And what you're going to do is you're just going to press play here. I would maximize the video because if you maximize the video, it's kind of a bit easier to see it. Unfortunately, I can't maximize it and record at the same time. So we'll just do our best here. 
and we're going to shift this until we see the color absorb the best. So here, the biggest change here was when I put it over that red light. So you're going to take and just shift this until the cuvette is directly in front of the color that absorbs the best. Sometimes you have to mess with it. Okay, and so once I see that the cuvette, which is like that little plastic container or glass container that the um, solution is in, is directly in front of the color that absorbs the best, I'm going to go down here and look at the gray scale, the gray color. So with that, I'm going to have to go up here to my tools, and you're going to have to take a guess of what you think the correct percent transmittance is. So as it gets more concentrated, the percent transmittance is going to go down. So if you grab this one, you see it's all very, very light, and that certainly doesn't match. And again, you have to take a color that is absorbed the most and put your grayscale directly below it on the gray shade. So that one doesn't work, so I'm going to shift down. I'm going to try this one. You go, oh, that's better. Those are closer to the colors. And you're just going to take and shift this until that gray of that percent transmittance seems to disappear. And you, it's going to be like a range, and you're just going to have to eyeball it as best you can. Notice here, 49 is definitely wrong. 51 is definitely too bright. And you're just going to have to keep shifting it until, according to your eyes, that little shade or that gray color is going to be um, completely gone. And to me, that's about 44%. And then I'm just going to record that data. I'm going to say that when I am at a concentration of 0.4 molar, that is my percent transmittance. So what are we going to do with all of this? Well, all of this we are going to graph. So you're going to take and you're going to look at your different solutions. And you're going to do this for every different concentration to get a nice clean graph. So if you start with zero, you're going to get nothing. You go to 0.5 and you press go you're going to find that it's going to be much, much, much lighter. Um, so it's going to be very, a lot less light is going to be absorbed because it's going to be much more dilute. So if I stop it directly above there, almost none is going to be absorbed. I'm going to go back to my tools. I'm going to get rid of that. Second, I'm going to get, get rid of the right one, which is this. I'm going to go back to more percent transmittance. And I'm just going to move this again until the gray kind of disappears into that grayscale ruler. And when it does, that is the correct percent transmittance. And you're going to take and you're going to put your data in here. So here, if your column, you're going to put for your X axis is going to be concentration. My advice is to do one letter to describe these because um, it's going to make your life a lot easier. And you can take it any time and add a new column. So if I want to take and insert a column to the right, which I'm going to need here, I'm going to put absorbance for my new column. And I'm going to write my data down. So I'm going to have like you know, 5, I'm going to have 0.1, and then I'm going to have percent transmittance, and then I'm going to get my absorbance. And I'm just going to put a bit of data in here because I've done it for one of these. So for one of these, I have... Um, and I don't honestly know which compound I had, but I have 0.1, I have 0.2, and then I have 0.4, and those are some data points. Again, you're going to need to do all of them. My percent transmittance here was going to be 89%, and then I have 73%. And then I go down to 53%. And again, this is just me with one of those solutions. For my absorbance, remember that absorbance is what we really want on this graph, not percent transmittance. And absorbance is the minus base 10 log of the transmittance. And if you need to remember that, it's going to be right up here. And it tells us we have to take the minus base 10 log of it. And when you do that, you're going to get an absorbance. And when I get my absorbance, my absorbance values of here are minus... Oh, excuse me, I think these are it's not the log of the percent transmittance, it's the log of the transmittance. So you're going to take your um, percent transmittance and turn it into a 
fraction, and to do that, you're just going to remove that 100 from it, so make that a 0.89 rather than 89%, and here you're going to take the minus base 10 log of it. I did that on my calculator, and when I did that on my calculator, I got 0 0.0506 for the first one, I got 0.137 for the second one, and I got 0.276 for the third one, and now I have enough data that I can graph this. So I'm going to graph on my x-axis the concentration, which I've got the C for, and again, those are these values right up here for the concentration. The percent transmittance is how much went through. I divided by 100 and turned it into transmittance, and then I took the minus base 10 log of it to get absorbance, and then I graphed it. So my vertical axis here is going to be absorbance, and when I do that, I'm going to get a nice straight line. Once you get your nice straight line, you can put in a linear regression, which is going to be your best fit of that data. Once you have your linear regression, you have an equation. Your equation says that the absorbance is going to equal, this is going to be your slope, like y equals mx plus b, and that is going to be where c is your concentration, a is your absorbance, and then here, this is just your y-intercept, and what we can do with this line when we're through is we can actually take and predict how concentrated our solution is that. So make sure you write down that line. And when you go on, you're going to do both solutions, by the way, copper chloride and um, your um, copper sulfate, excuse me, and your cobalt chloride. So you're in two different graphs there. And then you're going to go down here to mystery concentrations. So in mystery concentrations, you're going to take your mystery solution and you are going to take and you're going to look at these guys, and we've got three different mystery solutions of each one of these. I want you to do all six, please. And you're going to do the exact same thing you're doing. So if I've got mystery solution three, I have the cobalt chloride. And again, I've got that nice um, linear regression and that nice best fit line. So when I hit play on this one, and this is the cobalt chloride, so it absorbs the best in the blue. I'm going to take, and I'm going to pull my tools out again. I'm going to get my grayscale. I'm going to move my grayscales. Remember down here on the um, gray one down here. And I'm going to move it till I get the best match. And when I get the best match, I've got my percent transmittance. Convert into transmittance by dividing by 100. Take the minus base 10 log and you'll get the absorbance. And then you are going to go back to your equation for your best fit line. Again, you'll have two of those because you have two different substances. And from those, you will be able to calculate C and get the concentration of each. I hope that helped.